Yeah. It's a pretty flat spot right here. Good a place as any to have lunch. So that's what I am gonna do. I'm gonna take this pack off. I'm gonna search around for some dead sticks. I brought my little twig stove with me today. Just decided I'd have breakfast, or well, not breakfast, but lunch out in the woods. And uh, I wanted to show you guys this pack I've had for about a year or so. Like I said, I don't do reviews. I just do, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a description of the gear that I use and why I like it. Nobody sponsors me. I just like sharing my equipment with, with you guys. I know I get a lot of questions on some of the gear I use, so I like to present it to you so you can make your own decision. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, it's just the stuff I use. So, yeah, I'm not going to keep yapping. I'm going to search around here, get some birch bark and some old twigs and get lunch going. So, let's do that. I love these spruces. All these lower lying branches are great. Yeah, so I thought this was a pretty cool little find. It's a little plaster sheetrock hatchet. It's uh, quite old. My wife and I, whenever we go vacationing, we always go into thrift stores and antique shops, and I've always got my eye open for stuff like this. And I actually found this thing for five bucks. Original handle, I couldn't believe it. The end of it, waffle head hammer. It's all in excellent shape. I had uh, my good buddy Chad Daniels. He's big into leather work, and I'm going to do a video with him and tell you a little bit more about him later on, but he made this really nice mask for me. It's got the little buttons, and he even added my symbol to it. Isn't that cool? But yeah, just a little plaster lath hatchet. Um, I think this one was made right around the 30s, so uh, yeah, I thought it'd be perfect for camping. Just small enough, and just big enough. I also brought with me some Vaseline impregnated cotton balls. So yeah, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. But I'm hungry. So, desperate times. Okay, get that ferro rod out. The old bushcraft black. There we go. There we go. Another little hack is I like to use that self-reliance screen as a uh, little buffer between the stove and the snow. Just helps it from melting down into the snow and vanishing. If snow is a problem for you, like it is up here for us in Vermont. Not that it's a problem. Far from a problem. I love it, but yeah, anyway. Nice little hack. There, so all that fire is doing its thing. I'm going to show you guys another cool little find of mine. I absolutely love this thing. It's way down the bottom. There it is. 
one of those little cold handled fry pans. This one's from 1876. Isn't that cool? I love this little guy. Fits perfect in my pack. Has a little tiny tear in the handle, but I think I might be able to spot weld that. Not going to hurt it any. It's plenty solid. I also always wrap it up in a bandana. And the reason I do that is because when I set it on here, it gets hot. You know, and all the soot, especially when I'm using softwood, it's really black. It really coats the bottom of this thing. So I wrap it back up in my bandana, put it in my pack. That way I'm not getting all my stuff in my pack all sooty and nasty. So, Plus it's always good to have a bandana with you anyway. Clean up, you, a million other things, you know the deal. So, yeah, just another little quick tip. If you're bringing these cold-handled fry pans with you, just wrap them up. It's pretty simple. All right, I'm getting hungry. Let's get this oil going. Get that warming up. these up nice and small they'll cook faster here's the sound yeah well those are browning up let's start the other part of this We'll shell it. Oh crap, I know what I forgot. I forgot my hot sauce. Can't have potatoes and onions without hot sauce. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to. It's amazing these little cold handles. That truly is stays cold. But one thing with these little twig stoves, you gotta stay on them. Don't grab the hot end. You don't stay on them; they go out pretty quickly. Time to add those shallots. Nothing better than the smell of frying onions. Those fries are all done. Oh my god, that looks so good. Yep. I'm going to let this go out. And start on my uh, refreshment I brought with me. Always got to have a step two, right? Cheers, everybody. It's one thing that amazes me. All the fancy frying pans that we have today, all the non-stick stuff. This thing was made in 1876, according to the patent right there. And, uh, yeah, I don't have anything stick. Mmm. Nothing like a hot meal in the woods. Mmm. And a cold beer. I wish I brought my chair. 
I did screw that up. And hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Any of you guys have a favorite hot sauce? If you do, leave it in the comments. I'd love to try some. All right, guys, lunch is over. So, like I said, without further ado, I want to show you this rucksack. This is the L.L. Bean Continental Rucksack. I've had this thing for a little over a year now. I really, really like it. It's uh, basically to replace my Alice Pack. I don't, know if I've, I don't know if any of you have used an Alice Pack. There are some aftermarket hip belts and straps you can get to make it more comfortable. But for the most part, they are agonizing to bring anywhere. They're cool. I like them. They have their place. But when you're serious about this stuff and you want something a little bit more up to date, I think this thing fits the bill. Um, it's really, really rugged. The bottom of it is double reinforced with a 1000D nylon bottom. I love that. A lot of packs aren't, don't come that way anymore. You know, they want to save weight. But I'd rather it be rugged and not have, you know, buy once, cry once. And it, it kind of has that military spec feel to it, this pack. I like that. It also has the, the two, I don't know, straps on the bottom. They extend out to about two feet. So you can add a bedroll or a tent or something on the bottom. Um, the pack weighs in at about six pounds. And at, at the making of this video, as of January 2024, this thing retails 150 bucks. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them at all. Like I said, this is just the kit I use. I really like it and I wanted to show it to you guys. So there's that. Um, the other thing is this pack is also fully adjustable so you can adjust this with the velcro and bring you know the straps up or down depending on your torso length um decently padded back panel um it's got a hip belt got some molly webbing on on the side so you can attach some hip pockets if you want um that's the only downfall i mean the, the hip belt is it's kind of wimpy but it is just a day weekend pack. You're not you're not going to be carrying 50 pounds. You know you're going to be carrying teens or 20s of pounds in this thing. So it's not real crucial to have a super heavy duty, you know, hip belt. But it would have been nice if it had some foam or something. I haven't found that it's been uncomfortable at all. But there is that um, molly webbing up the sides. Um, of course, it's got the chest buckle. I don't know what you call that. Um, I always put a little ball compass in all my packs um, awesome carry handle really rugged in the top lid there's a stow pocket for a map or GPS or any other items you know your keys phone stuff you got to get too quickly I do like that it's also on the lid it's also got straps I don't know if you can see that so you can carry again a bedroll or a tent or something like that so you can do that top and bottom I love that um, you know, typical, typical bucket style pack. Uh, you open it up, these buckles are awesome, they're rugged. You know, it's got the typical drawstring, you know, the first one for the outer, the second one for the inner. Uh, it's a 37 liter pack, too, so you can put, you can easily do a weekend in this thing. It's got the hydration pouch in the back, I'm sure you're all familiar with those. Uh, it's got the hole in the side for your, uh, not an algene, what are those things called? Camelback or whatever you use to come out so you can use that to drink out of if you want. As I said, it is a bucket style pack. Um, so just big empty hole, I like that. Simplicity, aside from the hydration pack in the back. Um, so yeah, that's the outside of the pack. And then, or the inside of the pack. Now moving to the outside, you've got two, really big pockets either side they can hold a one liter bottle they can hold more than that one at least one liter bottle and you still have room oh god you can fit bandana some snacks some other stuff i have just my canteen in here and i have my rain fly for my pack in one side 
Um, like I said, you can carry two Nalgene bottles very easily on both sides if you need, need to. Um, center of the pack, you could probably fit two more Nalgene's or whatever else you need. Um, really deep pack. I don't know exactly what the measurements are. I don't remember. But inside this, you have screen. So you can separate some items. Um, I, I'd try to show you, but you'd never be able to see it. But yeah, so on the inside, you know, like, like I kept my oil and spoon. And anyway, if you want a toothbrush or toiletries or whatever you carry in there, you can separate them so that everything doesn't fall to the bottom and you lose it. Um, got my symbol on there. Thanks to my beautiful sister-in-law. Um, and the thing that really sold me on this pack the most was the fact that it has an axe sleeve. It has an axe sleeve on both sides, or for ski pole, probably for trekking poles more, more than likely, but I like it for an axe sleeve. So it's one of those on each side. Um, God, I forget anything? Oh, and it's an awesome color. So, yeah, anyway, that's the L.L. Bean Continental Rucksack. Um, I love the thing. It's super durable. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of years out of this stuff, out of this thing. I mean, similar to most of all the other L.L. Bean items I have. Um, anyway, it also is, I forgot to mention, it's, it's double layer. So the outside is a 600D poly, poly, and the inside is a 200, so it's double layer. I like that too. So anyway, all right guys, that's enough about the pack. It's starting to snow. I'm going to keep continuing and try to find some, some sheds and explore around a little bit. And uh, if you like this kind of thing, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. See you guys.